Hello, and welcome to today's Quick Plays video on why we bet or raise in poker. Understanding the reasons behind betting or raising is one of the most fundamental pieces of information needed for any poker player. In this video, I'll show you the real reasons for betting or raising, some common misunderstandings, and use some examples to make sense of it all. There are three main reasons why we bet or raise in poker. First is betting for value, and that enough worse hands will continue. Second is betting as a bluff, and that enough hands will fold to make our bet profitable. And third is to fold out our opponent's equity share in a pot. In general, we should focus on the first two, since the majority of our bets should either be value bets or bluffs. For a bet to be for value, we need to be ahead of at least 51% of their continuing range, and a good bluff means villain folds more than the breakeven percentage given our bluff size. If you aren't sure what I mean by that, check out our free video on breakeven poker math. This concept is probably more easy to visualize with some examples, so let's look at a couple hands. In this first hand, we open from middle position with ace-king, get called by the button, and see a heads-up flop of ace-8-5. We continuation bet. If we think about why we are betting here, this is a bet for value. We expect that when villain gives our bet action, we will be ahead of his range. Sure, he's not going to fold 8s, 5s, or ace-8, but wouldn't he continue with many worse hands, like ace-queen, 9s, 7s, 6s, and spades? We can expect to be far ahead of his continuing range, and thus this is a classic value bet. The button calls, the turn is a queen of diamonds, we bet, and villain raises. For practice, let's consider what a raise ourselves would accomplish here. If we 3-bet this turn, how would villain give us action? One of the biggest misunderstandings newer players have is overvaluing hands like top air, top kicker. They bet and raise this hand strength constantly just because they have top air, top kicker. But everything we do in poker is relative to our opponent, their ranges, and the board. So your reasoning for doing anything in poker should never be purely based upon your exact hand strength. Assume for a moment the villain would raise this turn only with ace, queen, and slow played eights and fives. This range may or may not be correct, but we'll use it just to simplify the spot. If we were to 3-bet this turn, would he ever fold a better hand? Probably not. And if we 3-bet the turn, does he ever continue with a worse hand? Well, if we didn't think he'd raise with a worse hand, he can't all of a sudden continue with one. So a 3-bet isn't for value because not enough worse hands continue, and it's not a good bluff since villain won't ever fold. Whenever that's the case, it tells you that it's a bad spot to raise, since the raise doesn't accomplish anything other than losing you even more money. But what if we change villain's range slightly and assume he's raising the turn with ace queen eights and fives, but also ace ten pocket nines and nine eight? Now we're ahead of more of his raising range, but is a three bet going to be good? Players new to this concept may see that we are crushing some of the hands in his raising range and think, of course I can three bet for value now. But remember, it's only a value re-raise if villain would continue with enough of those worse hands. If he'd only give our 3-bet action with ace-queen, pocket 8s, and pocket 5s, and fold all the rest, the 3-bet isn't for value. Rather, it would turn our hand into a bluff and fold out his equity share with his 9s, 9-8, and ace-10. In the second hand, we face an open raise from early position, middle position calls, and we squeeze from the cutoff with kings. Only middle position calls, and we see a heads-up flop of 10-9-3 rainbow. He checks, and we bet. Now this bet accomplishes two things. One, it's for value. Only a few combos of hands beat us, 10s, 9s, and maybe 10-9 suited or pocket 3s if he calls with that preflop. But worse hands like 10x or jacks can surely continue, and maybe 8s or 7s will call a bet. We can certainly expect to be ahead of the majority of many realistic continuing ranges. Two, this also folds out his equity from hands like king-queen and ace-queen. These hands have varying levels of equity against our hand, and while we're beating these hands right now, there's a chance they improve and beat us on future streets. Our bet here isn't for value against these hands, since they will likely fold against our bet. But if they will fold, then we are denying them their equity share in the pot. Whenever you make a better raise in poker, or if you are even considering making one, you should always know what it's accomplishing. Are enough worse hands continuing to make a value bet? Are enough hands going to fold given my bluff size? Should I deny my opponent their equity share, or will they make sizable mistakes given the large chunk of the time they don't improve on their equity? These are the starting questions you should always ask yourself before taking an aggressive action. And lastly, there are three main notes I want to leave you with. 
One, it's much easier to value bad arrays against bad players since they will continue with wider ranges. Two, it's much easier to bluff tight players since they will only continue with stronger ranges and thus will fold more often. And three, his focus on value and bluffs for your main reasons for betting. Denying villain their equity share can be prudent, but it's usually not the main reason for making a better raise. Also notice that betting for protection was never listed as a main reason for betting or raising. Whether you are a brand new player or a seasoned poker grinder, you need to understand this fundamental element of poker. Everything we do on the table should be deliberate and thought out. So every better raise we make should be done with purpose and a clear understanding of what we're trying to accomplish. Understand this first, and it will make future play more fun and profitable. Same as always, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, good luck and happy grinding.